Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Brett Barrow, founder and CEO of HerFeed. As a reminder, the information provided during this event is for informational purposes only. If you have any questions around the COVID-19 pandemic, please visit our website at providence.org or visit cdc.org for their official medical updates. This event does not create a doctor-patient relationship and any questions or medical advice discussed is not considered guidance on what you should do. For any medical questions, please reach out to your primary care or healthcare professional. Joining me today is Dr. Christian Lysing, Lissing, uh, Regional Medical Director of Urgent Care at St. Joseph Heritage Healthcare. And today we are going to be talking about the ABCs of urgent care. Uh, before we begin though, Dr. Lissing, can you tell us what your role is as Regional Medical Director at St. Joseph's? Oh, sure. Uh, well, Brett, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Christian Listing. I'm the uh, regional medical director for our Orange, our Orange County um, uh, Urgent Care is here, and that encompasses uh, the St. Jude, St. Joseph, and uh, Mission Heritage Medical Group. So we have four urgent cares down here, and soon to be five coming July 6th uh, this year. Um, so my role is pretty varied. Along, um, I consider myself uh, both a clinician because uh, I still see patients, and and I um, I work with uh, with our Medical, our medical directors, as well as our other doctors and physician assistants on clinical questions, clinical protocols. Um, but at the same time, too, I also do administrative work. So I work with medical directors, um, <clears throat> and my uh, my operation leads uh, to work uh, to develop protocols um, that we're going to be using in the urgent cares and try to standardize those cares for them. I'm also the representative, you know, for um, the urgent cares down here in Orange County to Providence's um, ambulatory care network. Oh, wow. That's so a it's pretty full plate. I was going to say, you have a lot on your plate. A um, lot of plate. What are some of the patient issues that uh, can be addressed by going to urgent care? That's a good question. I, um, Dr. Dr. Farnsworth, had done, um, who had done the, the Facebook Live last week, had really given us a really good, um, good outline of what should be going to the emergency department and what shouldn't. Uh, the, way I, the way we look at it is that if, if you can't walk in, uh, if you've got crushing chest pain, you look like you're having a stroke, or if your appendage is um, is missing, probably the emergency department would be the the best place for you. Otherwise, I'm um, doing um, come on into urgent care. Pretty, we're able to take care of a, quite a few uh, medical issues, both on the acute side as well as some of the chronic chronic problems. How does if perhaps I was having a medical problem and I needed to go to urgent care, how would I actually go about doing that? What is the process? Because it, you know, is it, do you just show up? Do you call ahead? How, how does that work, especially in the times of COVID? Yeah, that's a really, that's a really good one. The, um, well, I, first of all, I always, I always tell our patients that, um, that an urgent care is not like a primary care office, with a primary care or even a specialty office, <clears throat> you're, you have a scheduled visit, so you know exactly what time you need to come on in. Um, so what urgent care is, is that it's kind of like, um, it's a first come first serve. So if you've ever been to a restaurant, for example, that doesn't take reservation, like your favorite Chinese restaurant doesn't take reservations, you kind of sign your name in there, right? And you're, uh, when the table is available, you're the next one up. So urgent care is very similar. So there's three ways that I see how we can act, uh, how our patients can access us. One, and probably by far the most common is for you to come on in. So driving up to our, uh, to our urgent cares um, and, walk, and doing walk-in is primarily how most of our patients see us. Uh, the second way of doing it is, um, is actually looking online, going to providence.org and, and looking for our urgent cares. You can see on that website you know, what the wait times are at all of our facilities. And so you can kind of get an idea of like, which, which urgent care do I want to go to and which, uh, which, which one has the longest, uh, uh, longest uh, wait time and which one has the shortest. And if uh, <clears throat> the one that has the shortest wait time is much closer to you, driving over there, you get an idea how, uh, how long your wait time would be. Uh, the third way we do it and something that we've been uh, doing down here in, um, in Southern California, Orange County, is that we've been doing telehealth visits. So accessing the Providence website, uh, what Providence.org website again, and looking up our urgent cares, you can actually um, click on a button that says reserve my spot. And on there, you can say, oh, I'd like to do a telehealth visit. And we will, we'll set you up in the urgent care um, um, 
in the in the schedule and we'll have someone call you and you could do a telehealth visit with one of our providers in that facility. Oh wow, that definitely. I mean it depending upon what it is, that sounds really convenient, especially. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a terrific, especially in, as you mentioned, in this area of, era of COVID, where a lot of people are still a little afraid, a little skittish about coming in, or they're really kind of following what, uh, what the governor's uh, lockdown uh, policies are. You know, they'd rather, they want to see if they can do something online. And it's been a, a terrific, uh, terrific advantage um, you know, for our um, for our origin care, you know, it's certainly a service that um, I think we'll, we're certainly going to be continuing, you know, past COVID and certainly from here on out. Um, I think, you know, one thing that I didn't know until I started to understand, I guess, the medical industry a little bit better or whatnot, um, is, you know, you have your primary care physician and then you people always hear about ERs, going to the ER and, you know, you sort of, there's, People know, I guess, that you go and you'll see an ER doctor. What are the types yeah. of caregivers that you that someone could expect to meet or, um, you know, see at an urgent care center? Oh, okay, so yeah, well, well, I, I like to think that we've got really, really the top notch doctors uh, and, and uh, physician assistants and nurse practitioners in our group. Um, they're all very dedicated individuals who. Um, uh, who've been trained in urgent care and really know how to take care of a lot of the acute diagnoses, but at the same time, too, are really adept at doing a lot of the procedures that maybe some of our primary care doctors really aren't not comfortable doing. A majority of our, our doctors, of course, are family physicians because um, as a family physician myself, we've got a really breadth of knowledge, and uh, so we take care of our, really, our, our young patients as well as our um, uh, our youthful patients, and then uh, myself, our older, our older patients, and geriatrics. Right. Um, so we, uh, so we see a really good swath of, of of those individuals. However, it doesn't mean that we don't have emergency room doc, uh, emergency room physicians that are part of our uh, uh, part of our teams. Uh, we have internal medicine physicians who are also part of our teams. Um, but a lot of them, again, um, they they bring a, such a such a breadth of knowledge uh, to our urgent cares that I feel that you know when any time a patient comes in, no matter how old they are, we we'll really be able to take care of them very, very well. Which I feel like, especially during this time, going to an yep. urgent going to urgent care does sound like that would be if you can avoid going to the ER and still see a very good doctor and somebody who can, who can take care of you. I mean, I. I'm all for urgent care in that sense. Oh, sure. absolutely, um, absolutely. So if you do go to urgent care, how would mm -hmm. your primary care doctor, is there, how does your doctor find out that you went to urgent care or how does your information, how does it get transferred to your doctor or vice versa? Oh, that's a good one. They are, you know, you know what's, what's kind of great about um, the patients that we see is the majority of our patients are actually patients within our medical groups. So there are patients either at St. Jude or St. Joseph or at Mission Heritage. And so the advantage that we have is that we actually share the same medical records, um, the same electronic medical records. So we're actually able to see the uh, a patient's past medical history. And when we write their notes, those notes are actually goes into the medical record. So, um, so the doctor, the primary care doctor actually can see that note that we wrote um, in the emergency, um, in the urgent care, and um, so they can they can take that and um, and feel that they yeah I was part of that that team. Um, you know, now if a patient, of course, we see a lot of patients who are whose primary care doctors are not uh, not affiliated uh, with our medical group, and that's okay too. So we we won't want to see as many people, and certainly uh, uh, introduce um, Providence to everyone. So in those instances, if a patient wants us to send them, a, uh, send their doctor a copy, we just CC them a note and it gets actually faxed over there. You know, um, I'm not sure if everyone still uses faxes, but I think that's what we're doing. We're faxing, uh, faxing it to, uh, faxing it to their other uh, primary care doctors. But, um, but like I said, when going back to the EMR, I think the really advantage of of having kind of this integrated system is that we're able to actually look at, you know, past, uh, you know. Uh, patients' past history, uh, past medications, um, laboratory studies that, you know, really kind of help us narrow down the problem that the patients come in with, especially some of the ones that are a little more complicated. And we're like, oh, okay, you know, you look like you've had this, this, this um, done. Okay, I don't have to think about that problem. I really want to focus on something else. So. Uh, no, I, I think that that has to also get people just an, an incredible peace of mind knowing that 
you don't have to go into a clinic and feel like or an urgent care center and feel like the doctors are not going to have any history about you and absolutely. Into all of that yourself. Um, oh, absolutely. What would someone do if, um, uh, what would someone do if they need to go to urgent care, but it's outside of the clinic's hours? How do you handle um, that? Well, if it's outside the clinic hours, so our, all of our urgent cares are open um, for 12, uh, 12 hours a day. Um, so any, um, in, um, in two of my clinics are open eight to eight and the other one is open from nine to nine. So we're pretty much open at a good piece of the day. Um, What's kind of great about it is that it does, um, you know, uh, not only are we able to see some of those acute cases, we all we also have X-ray facility, an X-ray uh, facility at all of my facilities. So that way, if there if we need to figure out if there's a fracture or a sprain, or if you need to do a chest X-ray, we're actually able to do it at those at those urgent cares. Um, but if um, if it happens after hours, and it really kind of depends on how severe their problem is. If it's something that they can wait the following morning. Um, well, we encourage them to come back the following morning because we'll be open for them either eight o'clock or nine o'clock. If it's something that you're like, gosh, you know what, the urgent care is closed, but gosh, you know, I really need to be seen right now because my limb is like falling off or something. We will probably encourage them to go to the emergency, to the emergency room for that. Uh, what would you do going back to sort of COVID? I guess what. Huh? What is your the protocol, or what is your what should someone do if they think that they have COVID symptoms? Is urgent care the place to go, and is it a place for COVID testing, or is that a is that separate? Yeah, that's a uh, you know we with this uh, with this pandemic. Um, I think what's been great about uh, not only Providence um, and Providence. Um, as a whole health system, and, but individually as all of our urgent cares, we really put safety top uh, top in mind, right? Anything that we do, we start, we think of the safety of our, not only our patients, but also our providers as well as our caregivers. And and many of the changes that we've made really has um, really has been due to this COVID, uh, COVID epidemic or a pandemic. But uh, I realize now that, yeah, you know, these are a lot of things that we should have been doing in the first place. And I think we're going to definitely continue in the future. So, when a patient first walks in, to, um, comes into the urgent care, they're, they're stopped at the door and we check their temperature and we ask them, we have a, either, a, either a nurse or a medical assistant that asks them the questions like, okay, what kind of symptoms are you presenting here with today? Um, because if you have non-COVID-like symptoms, like you sprained your ankle, their breath, and they say, well, what, um, we're going to check your temperature, make sure you don't have a fever. And if you don't have a fever, we're going to have you walk into a really spacious waiting room where you're going to be able to, you know, social distance or physically distance, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you do have um, COVID-like symptoms, what we're going to ask you to do is um, have you go back to your car and wait in your car for just a moment because we want to um, encourage them to do a telehealth visit first. Because it may be something that we can actually take care of that you don't actually have to walk into our building for. Because I think most of our patients are a little concerned about that too, right? They don't want to get more sick um, and they certainly don't want to get anyone else sick. So uh, if we can take care of it on a telehealth visit, we do that. If, however, you're like, gosh, you know, Brett's symptoms are a little bit more concerning and I think I really need to see her. Well, what we're going to do is that we're going to have a medical assistant who's completely who is completely um, uh, dressed in their full PPEs, their face shield, their glass, um, their mask, um, their gown, their hair, um, hair covering, and, and their gloves, and they're going to come up and meet them at a separate door from the from the general wait, uh, general um, uh, the general front door, and escort that patient directly into a waiting exam room, and there the um, they, they do the they do the intake, start the notes, and then they have the provider who is now going to come in again completely uh, completely covered in their PPEs and taking care of that patient. Once that's done, we escort that patient all the way back to their car, right? Because what we would, what we would like to do is want to make sure to to ensure some of our patients who are not coming in there for COVID like illnesses that hey, listen, they're really keeping us separate from those patients who are completely ill. And there is such a distance, any, uh, you know, such a distance between the, um, the two different openings of our urgent care. And there are two different entrances. And um, a lot of our patients are really appreciative of the fact that they're really keeping that, we're, uh, we're really conscious about their safety, you know, and um, making sure that uh, we're separating uh, those, that two group of, 
uh, patients. I feel like a lot of patients that that is what people need to hear just to have right. the reassurance knowing that they are safe and it is completely safe and not not going to say it's the way it used to be to go to someplace like yes. an urgent care, but it's actually even safer on some levels because of all these new protocols and extra measures that have been taken. Um, oh, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So uh, you sort of touched upon this before, but can you tell us how urgent care is innovating um, within the healthcare industry? Yeah. The well, at least for us, the um, there's two uh, two things that we've been doing. Uh, the first thing is something we've had uh, in place for a long time. So as I mentioned to you about that Chinese restaurant um, example, we do have a program where we can uh, we can tell our patients, hey, this is the wait time at all of our urgent cares. And you can, um, and if you want to reserve your spot in line, you can actually click a button and it reserves that spot for you. So, you know, instead of having to come in and waiting in our waiting room, which right now is very minimal anyway, but if um, if you have um, if you have some time and you want to come a little bit later, you can always do your shopping, go to the grocery store, sit at home, and then come in at a designated time. So that's the first thing that we've been doing, and that's pretty much been rolled out through all the Providence's urgent cares um, uh, from uh, uh, from Montana all the way down here to California. So the second thing that we're doing is that we're at, we've we really introduced and really pushed for the telehealth visits. We started this the tail end of March and uh, and we're continuing it now. So across the region, we're about 17 and a half percent of our um, our patient visits are telehealth visits. And it's really amazing to me, Brett, that how many times that when I'm when I'm taking when I'm seeing those patients, there's a lot of things I can do on a telehealth visit that I really didn't need to touch them. And, uh, and so I'm finding that that's um, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, patients are a heck of a lot more comfortable because they're doing it from the safety of their own home. Um, and on the simple fact that on days like this where it's a little overcast or it's, um, they feel like I really don't want to go outside, you know what? It's um, the telehealth is it actually works out terrific. Now uh, we we do have those instances, and that's probably less than less than 10% of the time that we feel that, yeah, your symptoms are pretty bad. We need to either see you here in the urgent care so we can look at the, listen to you or what we call lay our hands on you. Mm-hmm. Or you're like, gosh, you know, you really need to go to the emergency department. You just look very, very sick. And, um, but that's only about 10% of those cases. So a lot of, there's a lot of things that we can do on telehealth that, uh, that I didn't think we could do before, but uh, certainly here to stay. That's amazing. And I do think that when you think about right now, sort of the way things are, some people aren't able, a lot of people are working from home, a lot of people do childcare. Um, I mean, I remember in, I had to go to urgent care years ago when I was at work, but the whole process to actually go and leave work and everything was a few hours. Um, Absolutely. Something like telehealth right now, if it's not, you know, a, a, an urgent emergency per se, like is definitely something that, is much more convenient for people just oh, absolutely absolutely and, and if you think about it if we're anticipating you know the fall coming in and there's going to be not only we're we going to be dealing with uh, covid we're also going to be dealing with the flu you know how many people really want to come into a come into an urgent care when the perception is that it might be busy and they don't want to either wait in their car they would rather wait at home gosh the telehealth visit is a perfect opportunity for them you know they can um, they can go ahead and again be in the comfort of their own home. They don't even have to get dressed, put their shoes on their bread. It's awesome. Um, what about um, how does uh, how, if you if you do a telehealth ap- appointment or you even come mm-hmm. into urgent care? How what is the follow up? Is it is that based on the patient to follow up? Is that based off of? I mean, is that a case by case basis or you know how does that work afterwards? Is there a yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. So um, so the way we do it, and, and uh, what's kind of like I mentioned, what's kind of great about um, about having a doctor within Providence that um, and share who's sharing the same electronic records. There are many times where patients um, after after their visit will um, you know, we may just send a quick message out to their primary care doctor and say, hey, listen, we saw this patient. We're a little concerned about them. You know, we would like to, uh, you know, if you could do a quick follow up or follow up call the next day, because we may not be working that day, the next day. Um, you know, the, the our, our primary care colleagues are really happy to say, "Gosh, you know, thanks for taking care of uh, taking care of my patient after hours or on the weekend." Yeah, we'll certainly make a make a call for them, uh, you know, for them. Um, 
Uh, and but I because I think that that works as a team, right? Because I think in in health and healthcare now we really we really can't be that individual, you know, individual provider doing this and no one else knowing. I think um, I think the advantage of of what Providence offers is that we we're working as a team here, and it feels like everyone's working for the care of that one patient. Um, and as and so that's one of the things that we do. And in terms of other um, other things, if we have labs that come in, you know, we're going to give them a call and say, "Hey, listen, we got the, we got your lab results that um, that you left uh, left two days ago. These are what um, these are the results of it." And let me explain a little bit to you. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, so the follow-ups are typically you know go back to their PCP or if it's on the weekend, tell them, "Hey, we'd like to have you come on back in. If you if we haven't fixed it, come on back in. We'll take a look at it again." What um. We've actually whipped through our questions pretty quickly. So, um, yeah. but, uh, Justin, what what would someone expect um, if you're going to do a telehealth appointment? Is it just is it kind of like you set up your laptop? Is it by the phone? Like what? How does that actually? Oh, how do we do it? Yeah, like how does that work so that people, you know, can sort of educate themselves ahead of time if they need this type of. Oh, service? sure, sure. Well, I can walk you through it. Um, so what we do is that we we put um, we put that patient into our schedule. And the medical assistant who I'm like, say, for example, I'm the, I'm the doctor who's designated as our telehealth visit uh, doctor. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is my medical assistant will now call the patient up and explain to them we're going to be doing a telehealth visit, uh, tr um, get some, uh, get some uh, information about like their chief complaint, you know, meaning of what, uh, what they're coming in for, what they're, uh, what they're worried about. And, um, and then we get... Uh, we tell them how to how to set up a Zoom meeting. Um, so we encourage them to get onto Zoom, uh, either on their desktop or on their uh, on their smartphone, um, and kind of walk them through the steps. And once they uh, once that's uh, they're already set up, then what we do is that um, they, my medical assistant notifies me, say, Doctor, listen, your patient's waiting for you. And and if you've done those Zoom meetings, you put ad, uh, admit and. I have my discussion with them, you know, either on my camera, on my desktop, or on my cell phone. And while they're talking, I'm typing up because I have their medical record up, and I'm reading, uh, I'm reading my note as well as the notes that were, were written before me. And once it's done, um, I explain to them, this is what we're going to do, uh, letting your letting your doctor know. Um, and if you have any further questions, come on back in or give us another uh, give us another um, chance to to help you on a telehealth visit, and then we'll go uh, we'll go from there. So it's a relatively really easy step. So only, only say the only hard thing that we've been finding is that it's hard sometimes for people to get set up on Zoom. You know, <laughs> they keep they keep on putting that mute button, and we have no idea what they're saying. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, no, that's I, I feel like that has to be so reassuring to all of us because yep. you know there just are so many instances where you can't you don't feel good you want to get medical care but you can't leave your home. Um, for yes, whatever. exactly. So being able to just do it from the comfort of your home and knowing that it's private and safe and, you know, you're actually getting expert care is right. just, is something I think that message needs to be clear. Or me, Absolutely. A lot of people. Uh, we actually Absolutely. got a question from someone watching and it is, if someone is feeling anxious, like they're having mm -hmm. a panic attack, should they come to urgent care? Well, I think we we take care of a lot of patients with um, with certainly a lot of emotional distress. Certainly in times like this, where you know a lot of people are uh, cooped up at home or have had history of anxiety or depression. Uh, yeah, we certainly take care of a lot of those patients there, Brett. Um, I think that's part of our uh, part of our training, um, and certainly we encourage those patients to come on in. Now, of course. You know, the we always kind of look back as like what's causing the anxiety, right? Is it is it truly an emotional problem, or is it maybe like a crushing chest pain, or is it because I'm short of breath? And so we look, um, so we look at other diagnoses and not just assume it's just anxiety because um, you know I've been I've been tricked a few times when a patient came in and they said their um, their chief complaint was anxiety, and it turns out that they're actually having a heart attack. So mm -hmm. those are the things that we. Um, so if a patient comes in and we feel um, and uh, and they are feeling like they have a panic attack, certainly come on in. So we can, we can certainly take care of that and um, and certainly address those. And if it's something that we can't, uh, we're really fortunate and have a great relationship with our emergency department. That you know we will transfer those patients you know out to the emergency department um, you know uh, either by ambulance or par private vehicle. Um, and the, um, our partners over there will usually take care of it. You know the good thing though is that we don't transfer too many patients. Uh, to the emergency department, about only about two and a half percent of our um, 
our cases, we actually transfer out. So we were able to take care of quite a few things in the urgent wow. care. That's incredible. Yeah. I actually have a story. I, I wasn't feeling well months ago. And I, um, last year, and I was having chest pain and all this other stuff. And I actually went to urgent care and, yeah. um, it turned out that it was anxiety. I had no idea, right. but you know, and, and me as the patient, I felt so silly and embarrassed. And the doctor was so just, I couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been more reassuring yeah. and was, and basically said, you'd be surprised how many people come in here with the same thing, which gave me oh, absolutely. a lot better for sure. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and, and I think that there's a lot of things that um, uh, there there's a lot of there's a lot of cases like that too, where patients are like, "Gosh, I'm a little nervous about coming in. Is it something I really need to take care of now, or is it something I need to do later?" And honestly, those are the questions that are great for telehealth visits, right? Because you're like, "I'm not sure if I'm really wasting my time, you know, coming in and waiting, uh, waiting. Uh, you know, maybe it's something I could just maybe just talk over with someone on the on the phone or on a, doing a telehealth visit." And sometimes I think what, if it is based off of anxiety, once that, that, that starts going in your head and whatnot, it's harder sometimes oh. to pull that. And sometimes all you need is really just the reassurance from, um, the a reassurance from a medical professional to sort of help like alleviate the, yep. the symptoms. Uh, one Absolutely. last question before we go is, um, does urgent care do COVID testing? Uh, yeah, so we um, we do uh, we um, in uh, in two of our urgent cares we do uh, have COVID testing. Um, so we do we test for our symptomatic patients, patients who have, who have demonstrated some of the symptoms, uh, and we have uh, and have we have a heightened concern about them, right? Patients who have had uh, have chronic medical uh, medical diseases, you know, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, autoimmune problems, and those are the ones we really need to kind of watch out for. Uh, we're not real, and we're not at this point testing asymptomatic individuals, um, unless uh, unless we're going into a uh, going into a procedure uh, like they're going to be doing them have an operation or something like this. Um, so we're pretty much uh, focusing on our symptomatic uh, symptomatic patients. But yes, we do do COVID testing, and we're completely donned in our our full PPEs when we do that test. That that's good to know. Um, yeah. We have been talking. I can't believe that our time is up. So. I know. I can't believe it. <laughs> it went by so fast. Uh, I know. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lissing, for being here today. Uh, anything else you want to add really quickly before we wrap up? Uh, well, one thing is I just want to tell everybody that, um, you know, come on in. If you need our, if you need our care, uh, we're all here for you, and we're well prepared uh, to take care of anything that's uh, certainly coming to our doors. So we, we invite everyone to come on in and check out our urgent cares if you need us. That's good to know. Everyone take notes. Um, so uh, thank you so much, again, Dr. Lessing, for joining Bye. us today and to everyone for listening and sending in your questions. To learn more about our initiatives, programs, services, and ways to give, or if you're looking for medical care, please visit Providence.org. And make sure to follow us on social media at Providence Health System for LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and under Providence on Twitter. Thank you so much, everyone, and bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.